Good evening, San Diego. I'm Teresa Sardina with KUSI News. We're live in Chula Vista. We have continuing coverage of this heartbreaking news. This home right behind me, a Chula Vista home, up in flames early this morning, taking the lives of two children. We have details coming up. First, let's say good evening to Dan. Wow, that is so sad, Teresa. And we're in Old Town on Restaurant Row, and we're talking about the latest hurdle for the restaurants to get back into business. You know, they're open at 50%. Unfortunately, they can't find anybody to work. And we're going to talk about a couple of the reasons why that is coming up in a live report from Old Town. But first, say hello to Madison. Good evening, Dan. Well, we're live here in Chula Vista. San Diego County is currently five months into the vaccination initiative and 63% of the eligible population here in San Diego County. These residents have received that first dose of the vaccine. Now on Tuesday, LA County and San Francisco moved into the yellow tier with case numbers dropping and positive tests dropping as well here in San Diego County. When will we see moving into the yellow tier? We'll have an update here live in Chula Vista coming up. But first, let's say good evening to friends Maddie, happy Thursday. We do have uh, uh, big changes. Uh, look at this. What a difference a day makes uh, with uh, gray, May Gray. Also cooler temperatures, gusty winds, and even maybe some drizzle coming our way. We'll have all the details in just a few minutes. Let's say hello to Mr. Brandon Stone. Who is the home run king? Well, it depends a lot about your ethics of baseball. But for those of you who like to keep it old school and pick a New York Yankee, Boy, do we have an interview that you must see coming up in sports. But let's continue with Good Evening San Diego. This is Good Evening San Diego. Good evening, San Diego. I'm Logan Burns. Great to have you with us. I'm Ginger Jeffries. We'll top in our news tonight. Two young children died this morning in a fire at a Chula Vista home. And tonight, the investigation continues. KUSI's Teresa Sardina joins us live from the neighborhood with the very latest. Teresa. Good evening, Ginger. Yeah, we are right in front of this two-story home that was up in flames early this morning. Chula Vista Fire was dispatched around 1220 this morning. They arrived on scene within five minutes to assess what is going on. We have confirmed that it was a father in the home with his two children and an adult female. I had reached out to Chula Vista Fire uh, Captain Linda Diorsi to find out if that was the mother. We have not confirmed that at this time. Uh, according to Captain DeRossi, it was a father and his two children and the female adult inside of the home. When the fire sparked, the children could not escape the fire and were pronounced dead at the scene. The father was badly burned and was taken to UCSD Hospital for treatment. The woman was unharmed. It took crews under 40 minutes to knock down the blaze. We hear from Chula Vista Fire Battalion Chief Ray Smith as crews were assessing the scene. The investigators are on scene. They're doing, uh, doing their work to uh, find the origin and cause and uh, hopefully we'll have a report here, you know, um, here in the future. We have confirmed that one of the children is a student in the La Mesa Spring Valley District. A statement was sent to KUSI News this afternoon from Superintendent David Feliciano. Quote, today we learned that one of the children who died in a Chula Vista house fire early Thursday morning was a kindergarten student at Avondale Elementary School in Spring Valley. We are deeply saddened by this heartbreaking news. This is a truly devastating time and a terrible loss for our Avondale school community. Counselors will be available at the school throughout the rest of the week and if your children need any assistance dealing with this loss, please encourage them to speak with a counselor or a trusted adult. We ask that our community members keep the students' family and loved ones in our thoughts and prayers and we extend our deepest sympathies and all of our love to the family. And back out live, as you see, this two-story home here on Coralwood Court. The two homes on each side of the house uh, they have no damage, and fire investigators just left the scene before this live shot. They do have board up agencies here just assessing the property. But here's what's going on in this the last hour. So many residents, even neighbors, have been coming by, dropping off balloons and flowers and candles, angels and, and cards, just 
you know, sending condolences and their thoughts. And it's just so heartbreaking. We've been trying to talk to so many neighbors. They're just an uh, emotional wreck right now. And coming up at six, we're going to hear from a resident. She lives nearby and she's a grandmother of six. Her name is Cynthia Rodriguez and she is devastated. And she says, you know, this really wakes you up. It makes you think, you know, before you go to bed to make sure that the stove is off, that there's no candles burning, to make sure your smoke detectors are working. So she says something like this really, you know, brings awareness and it's just a pretty scary feeling. So at this time, this house fire here in Chula Vista is under investigation. As more information becomes available to our news- newsroom, we will share it at KUSI.com. I'll send it back to you, Ginger. You know, are you? I understand it's very early, and I understand that they can't speculate, but are you hearing anything from investigators that it appears to be suspicious, or does this just look like an accident, that something uh, ignited that maybe was faulty wiring, and they unfortunately uh, didn't have working uh, fire detectors. I mean, are you hearing it, where it could be an accident versus a suspicious cause yet? Ginger, we have contacted Chula Vista Fire to, you know, just to get any information on this. We do not know if this was suspicious or by accident, but I spoke to one neighbor. She actually came by and she was just not really emotional. She was more frustrated. She said that she knows the father and she says this whole situation is just disturbing. So we'll you always have to wait to see, you know, what was the cause of this fire. Yeah. All right, Teresa, it's a heartbreaking story and obviously has a lot of attention. So uh, we'll look forward to your report next hour. Thank you. Well, San Diego is remaining in the orange tier as Los Angeles and San Francisco are moving into that less restrictive yellow tier. County officials say it's because of our current case rate. KUSI's Madison Sinclair joins us live from Chula Vista with details. Maddie. Good evening, Logan. Well, San Diego County is currently five months into the vaccination initiative and have officially surpassed three million doses being administered. Now, 63 percent of the eligible population for San Diego residents have received their first dose and 44 percent have received their second dose. Now, in the last five months, the demand for the vaccine has been a lot greater than the supply. Well, with uh, cases uh, diminishing and uh, positive tests going down as well. Now, the uh, county public health officials reported that 226 new cases as of Thursday. Now, with this going down, the supply now is much greater. With L.A. County and San Francisco moving into the yellow tier, when will we see San Diego moving into the yellow tier as well? Well, we did ask uh, County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher that question. Take a listen. Well, to move to the yellow tier, we would need two consecutive weeks of, uh, of case rate uh, in the yellow tier metric. Um, you know, I will note that, that San Diego has a lower overall COVID case rate uh, than Los Angeles does throughout the duration. They had significant spikes um, where, where more of their folks, significantly more of them were infected, um, which lowers the probability those folks would get it now. So we would have to have two consecutive weeks uh, in, the, uh, in the yellow tier. Uh, I'm not overly optimistic that will happen before we get to June 15th, um, which is just over a month away, which is the retiring of all of the colored tiers. Uh, But we'll have to monitor and see how we're going. We obviously descended this week. We're lower this week than we were last week. Uh, So we'll continue to assess it as we move forward. I would like to point out that uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco have a a higher uh, testing uh, percentage. And that uh, can help uh, decrease the uh, case rate to a lower level. So that is one reason why San Diego has a, a lower um, case rate because of the increased amount of testing that they're doing um, throughout the county in schools and probably even in, in colleges. Now, despite San Diego County joining Los Angeles County and San Francisco in the yellow tier, Nathan Fletcher did compare the case rates and the vaccination rates to L.A. County. Take a listen. We are far ahead of of Los Angeles in uh, in the number of of folks vaccinated. You know, 63 percent of of all eligible population have got at least their first dose. That is significantly uh, ahead of L.A. Our overall COVID case rate is lower than L.A. So I don't really care. You know, they they got all their cases out of the way in a huge spike that was really awful. And now they have fewer people to get it. So they may be a little bit ahead of us in uh, in case rate at the moment. But San Diego is still better. 
Now the county is making the vaccine easier for people to get. We are live here in Chula Vista. You can see there's a little bit of a line, but this is one location here in Chula Vista that is extending their hours. They will be open until 8 p.m. That is Sunday through Thursday, 1 to 8 p.m. Now the county is also working to make it easier by extending appointments seven days out. Now before we've been uh, seeing that people can make appointments up to three days out, now they're making it up to seven days out. But this location here in Chula Vista, we are also talking about one in Oceanside and one in El Cajon. Again, they are extending their hours from 1 to 8 p.m. That is Sunday through Thursday. We're live here reporting in Chula Vista. I'm Madison Sinclair. I'll send it back to you, Logan. Maddie, San Diego County saying that we need another 1 million San Diegans vaccinated before we can get to that herd immunity. So we're making some progress. Thanks for the live report there from Chula Vista. Well, building on the bipartisan work done during the wear a mask campaign, California Governor Gavin Newsom and former governors Jerry Brown, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Pete Wilson have all come together to encourage all Californians to get vaccinated. Now, we understand that some people aren't sure about getting the COVID vaccine. We're asking you now, don't miss your shot to bring California all the way back. Reuniting families and friends. Hugs. Road trips. Theme parks. Movies. A pump in the gym. The good news? We're on track to fully reopen the state on June 15th because Californians have been stepping up to get vaccinated. Over half of all Californians have received at least one dose. Getting to immunity means getting all the way back to the things we love to do. That's why we can't let up now. Getting vaccinated doesn't cost you anything. And it's safe and effective. You're more likely to get an allergic reaction listening to the Sacramento politicians. Oh, come on, Arnold. Low blow. Oops. But seriously, no matter your political stripes, getting vaccinated is what we do as Californians, as Americans. It's how we come roaring back. But don't just take it from us. Talk to your doctor. Listen to the experts. Not the fake experts on the internet, but the real scientists and doctors. I made my decision to take the vaccine. I hope you'll join me. I got my shot. 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 Don't miss your shot. Okay, was Arnold just epic? <laughs> I mean, what did you say, Devin? You were going to say, wear a mask or what? How'd you do his voice? No. Wear a mask now. <laughs> All right, this ad comes as Sharp Healthcare has reached a significant milestone in administering 500,000 COVID-19 vaccines in San Diego County. You, you love that, right? <laughs> I, I, you read my mind. That's exactly what I was thinking. I mean, out of all of them, the one that caught my attention was Arnold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we got our shots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah I got one. So got one. Ah, you got one more. Got one more Halfway there. Right. Halfway there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, let's uh, talk about uh, happy birthday, by the way, Ginger. Birthday girl today, uh, beautiful day, but what a difference a day makes. Uh, we've had uh, some changes, sunny inland, but along the coast, not so sunny. In fact, uh, completely uh, cloudy. That May gray is sticking around, and we're still seeing those clouds still hugging the coast uh, across uh, portions of uh, San Diego County. You can see it right there. So not a whole lot of clearing along the coast. Uh, 64 right now, downtown San Diego with uh, mostly cloudy skies. The temperatures in the valleys cooler than yesterday. So we've really uh, cooled down uh, 70 for Ramona, Escondido Valley Center, El Cajon 68, 61 Carlsbad for uh, the mountains, uh, 67. Julian, Palomar Mountain, and 94 right over Brago Springs. So still holding on to the 90s there, but still uh, we are cooling down across uh, the board pretty much with the exception of Borrego Springs. So temperatures have really uh, taken a dive down today, and uh, that's going to be pretty much uh, the name of the game. Uh, temp for the water temperature, 63 to 64, so starting to warm up uh, a little bit more right there. Low rip currents, waves pretty flat, only two feet up and down uh, the coastline, and our complete sunset tonight, in case you want to catch that at 734. Uh, here's a look at what we can expect for the marine layer. It is going to be deeper tonight. It's going to be more extensive. We may even get a bit of a patchy drizzle uh, after midnight. And not only that, but dense fog also will be a problem tonight into early tomorrow morning. It'll clear by uh, tomorrow, 8 to 9 o'clock in the morning for the inland locations. But the coasts are still going to be dealing with the marine layer into late morning, better clearing by the afternoon potentially, at least maybe for a couple hours, and then it's going to come right back. Uh, our temperatures tomorrow, 68. We'll continue to see the cool down, 75 for the inland valleys, the mountains 66, the deserts 95 degrees, and we do have a wind advisory uh, that is uh, going to go into effect by Friday afternoon. 
2 o'clock and continue through Saturday morning for the desert areas. And even the mountains are going to be dealing with some uh, gusty winds, but definitely the deserts will have the highest gusts, about 55 miles per hour. So we'll have uh, your Mother's Day weekend forecast, let you know about this uh, May gray. I don't know how you feel about that, if you like it, if you embrace it, if you don't. No. Keeps the air conditioning bill down. That's true. But it is interesting because as soon as, I mean, we both uh, live North County along mm -hmm. the coastline, and as soon as you hit the 52, the sun opened up, and it was like, oh, wow, yeah. it's yeah. not cold. Beautiful. It's, yeah. I, I, I kind of, it's a, you know. I get lazy. I don't, I, don't, I, I do too. I don't You're love lazy. May Gray, but then I know it cools us down. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I see it, it's like, where's the sun? I miss it. Mm. You know, it's good napping weather. You've got mi mi mixed, mixed reactions. Mixed to it, reactions, it like, yeah. yeah. But mixed I'm going to help you with that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I'm get you into yeah. a nice there. No. <laughs> um, all right. So still to come, we are talking with San Diego District Attorney Summer Stefan to discuss all of the accomplishments so far since she was elected. Coming up. released a midterm report detailing 50 initiatives, programs, and reforms that have been achieved under her leadership. She also gave us a glimpse of what's coming up next. Joining me now to help elaborate on her report is San Diego DA Summer Stefan. DA, good to talk with you as always. Happy birthday. How oh. exciting. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, especially to hear that from you. So thank you. Um, you know, I, I've watched your video. I've gone through the report. I mean, it's just incredible. You know, I'm a big fan. You've got quite a, a few accolades under your administration already, including correcting the inequities in the criminal justice system. You've been addressing mental health and homelessness in the criminal justice system, and you've increased support of crime victims. But you know what? The one that that really jumped out to me that I'd like you to start with is the work that you've done on the untested rape kits. Tell me about that. Yes, we, we actually reached this milestone uh, just at the end of this past month. Um, 2010 rape kits have been tested that were previously untested from all of the different police departments and sheriff's department. Um, it was a monumental task, but I committed that this is a priority. No victim should go through a sexual assault exam, which takes hours and is, is really, um, really difficult emotionally and physically, and then have that uh, sit on a shelf. So we took care of that. Uh, we were able to divert some of my asset forfeiture and other money to help pay for it, so we expedited it, and we worked hand in hand and collaboratively with all the police department that committed um, to this project, and 
we got it done. Why was it so important for you to uh, especially make this a key point for you? I mean, I applaud it. it. To hear that there were untested rape kits is just really bothersome. Uh, but to know that you led the charge and put your money there to, to make sure that those uh, kits got tested, why was that so important? Well, as, as you know, this, this is a passion for me. I uh, pioneered the Sex Crimes and Human Trafficking Division. It's, it's set a national uh, model for how you treat victims of sexual assault and human trafficking. Uh, but this uh, part, this piece needed to be taken care of. And part of it is that the rules weren't clear, meaning the Department of Justice rules we're not clear about testing all of the rape kits. And so with priorities and new cases coming in, some cases sat back on a shelf, but it, it is, it's not the right thing to do. And it was my commitment that I was gonna assist all of law enforcement to get it done. And we joined together and got it done. And so, now we can really be a region that doesn't just say that we're committed to crime victims of sexual assault, but that we actually act that way. Yeah, and especially coming from the top, you really have set a precedent now for everybody to follow. I noticed you also in your report, you kept the wheels of justice moving during the COVID pandemic. Uh, I mean, talk to me about that, how the challenges associated with that. Well, the challenges were incredible. I mean, we the courtroom doors, the front doors were shut, but we still needed to make sure that uh, serious cases, that we don't lose track of them, that we don't have, uh, you know, the kind of releases that, that impact public safety. So we converted everything to remote within a few weeks, working with the courts, with the sheriff's department, with the public defender, and we were able to actually kind of beam into a courtroom and take care of business remotely, have witnesses testify, uh, have a, a COVID place to, to make sure that witnesses can come in with a laptop and testify in the courtroom. But in addition, domestic violence, we had a thousand more victims, but we had very little shelter room because of distancing. So working with a private uh, NGO that had developed an app to put all of the shelter beds under one system. So after one call from a victim within minutes, we can find the right placement. Uh, I think this was really huge, being able to remove victims from danger and put them in a safe place. Uh, and we worked on another handle with care app for, for children that might be in distress where police notice or serve a warrant and see kids in that circumstance and can notify their schools to assist them. So all of these innovations, and again, I want to emphasize, you know, I, I, you know, I'm the DA, but I have an amazing team that I work alongside. Um, and it is the team of DAs, of investigators, paralegals, victim advocates that got this done, uh, all of us working together as a team. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but they respond to your leadership, which is so key. Uh, before we go really quickly, what's next? What do you have in the future that you really want to make a difference with? I'm so excited. We have uh, so much in the future. But one thing that's going to come on board is a family justice center in the North County. Uh, North County has had uh, fewer services than most regions. This is I, can, I attribute that to get, having the highest rate of domestic violence homicides in the North County. And so having a center, a one place hub for seniors, for children, for uh, women and families to come in, get help, get prevention before things get turn violent uh, and assist them to escape from violence is really the thing I'm most excited about in the future. Uh, excited to see what happens over the next couple of years and always appreciate the time that you spend with us and certainly the way that you advocate for victims across San Diego County. DA Summer Stefan, thank you so much. Thank you. All right.